Hi everyone, this is my predictions video for AQA Trilogy Paper 1C 2025. Now, Paper 1 deals hugely with atomic structure and periodicity. That means you have got to understand the periodic table inside out. You need to know that the elements are arranged in atomic number. That, remember, is the same as the proton number. Remember the charges and the masses of protons, neutrons and electrons. This comes up every single year. Why are atoms neutral? Because they have equal numbers of protons and electrons. How do you find the neutron number? Well, you need to take away the proton number from the mass number. So make sure you can interchange between these numbers really easily. The electronic configuration rules, remember, mean that the first shell of electrons contains a maximum of two electrons and thereafter eight electrons. So be prepared to draw the electronic configurations for the elements of the periodic table. Remember that the elements on the left-hand side of the periodic table are the metals, whereas the ones on the right-hand side are the non-metals. When you have a non-metal bonding with a metal, you have ionic bonding. Make sure you can practice drawing those square bracket diagrams and include charges. Remember that the non-metal gains an electron from the metal, so you need to use a cross or a dot to represent that you've got a different element. Covalent bonding requires two non-metals. And as I've said, you can't underestimate the importance of these topics. This is really the fundamentals of chemistry, what chemistry is all about. Linked with this is the chemical structure topic, so the differences between giant ionic, giant covalent, simple molecular, and giant metallic structures. You're gonna to have to be very precise with your wording here, making sure you know the definition of your ionic bond, why diamond is hard, because it has many strong covalent bonds, which require lots of energy to break, Remember to use your words really accurately. It makes no sense whatsoever to describe covalent bonds as being weak. Equally, it makes no sense whatsoever to describe intermolecular forces as strong. Simple molecular substances have low boiling points because they have weak intermolecular forces. And for more of this precise wording, you can check out my revision guides, which are online PDFs, because I have been incredibly precise with my wording here. To as I've said previously, make sure you answer every single question on that paper. Don't worry about looking silly. You're just a candidate number, which means you're incredibly anonymous. So I don't want you leaving any questions blank. And I want you to make sure that you read every single question. Make sure you can draw appropriate apparatus. And remember, in chemistry, you need to draw your diagrams in 2D. There's really no room for artistic license here. You'll need to draw your Bunsen burner as an arrow with the word heat under it they will not want you to draw an actual Bunsen burner. Mole calculations, please do not ignore these. Make sure you've practiced your mole calculations. Make sure you can calculate limiting and excess reagents as well as reacting masses, which means finding the mass of a particular product. Electrolysis is obviously seen as a tricky topic. You do need to be able to write half equations. So that means adding or taking away electrons. Use the mnemonic oil rig to help you remember that oxidation is loss of electrons reduction is gain and do double check that you've learned the rules so that if you're looking at the negative ion remember it's the halogen which discharges first of all followed by oxygen with the positive ion it will be the least reactive element which tends to be a jewelry metal or hydrogen which is a non-metal but also very unreactive and lastly good luck let me know how you get on by commenting on this video, I like to read your comments and just to check in on you guys and see how you're all doing. But best of luck.